All right, so we're moving the tank downstairs. This is an 80 gallon tank. Yeah. Watch the court when I walk. Looks nice. Is it even? It's better. Melia approves. I think it needs to go just a hair. What's up, guys? Today I'm turning into a full freshwater scrub. I'm going to be aquascaping my very first large freshwater aquarium. So I have Nick and Chris, the gingerbread twins. Got a big order to fill. These guys helped me piece together all the different hardscape materials and also the equipment for this tank, which we did this in a day. Flashback. This is my first time shopping for hardscape materials and we're picking out rock and wood. I've always seen all the professional aquascapers choose what they want to use for their aquascaping stuff. That's all driftwood. Like this one's called spider wood, and this one's called dragon root. I'm not really sure what I want, but I'm just gonna try to honestly go with my instinct and pick something that I think will look really cool. This is awesome. Hey, stop playing with your wood, all right? <laughs> oh, that's kind of nice. cool. That's this would cool. like barely hang out of the tank. It's a beautiful piece of wood. It's I, I, perfect. It's perfect. Like, it's perfect. That is just a gorgeous <laughs> piece of wood. And a gorgeous little gingerbread cookie. Oh. Dude, this. This is sick. What is this? So this is dragon wood. It's a new type of wood that we have in. Uh, as you can see, it looks like a ton of different roots combined together. It's a relatively new wood to the US market here. It's the rarest piece of wood here. All right, guys, so this is Rachel. Hi, how's it going? This is all SR Aquare Stick rock and wood. What are these types? Like, what is this? So what we got here, some petrified wood. So that's, it's scared. It's terrified. <laughs> It's actually wood that's fossilized into a stone. Right. This one's an easy one. This oh, is that's just, the... This is just lava stone, so... Probably lava. came from a volcano, I'm guessing. I don't know. It's only my third day out here. I don't know. Yeah. It's something that's not probably gonna change your pH as well. So this is the dragon stone. So this is probably the most popular stone. This stuff is dope. Like, it looks like a mountain. It looks yeah. like a peak. A lot of people do use the dragon stone for mountainscapes. I'll take three boxes of that. <laughs> We're here at Gingerbread Tropical Fish and Coral. Nick and Chris just recently set up this massive plant display. So, picking up a bunch of different plants here. Starting with Anubius Nan Petite. Just gonna grab a whole bunch of them. We got a decent sized tank to talk whiskey. And then we got some Java Moss. These guys are Monte Carlo. We're just gonna kind of grab a bunch of these. Dude, those are so pretty. They just came in from the nursery like last week. I got some plants. Ooh, yes. yes. What are those? Those are These dope. are Anubias. Oh. See, you have the Nana version. These are the big version. Look how beautiful that is. Like, it's humongous. I know, that is actually a really pretty plant. If you guys are interested in setting up a planted tank, you can come here and you can buy all the stuff that I got for my tank from Gingerbread Tropical Fish and Coral. All right, we got our plants now. We're gonna head back to the house and set up this tank. One hour later. We have an 80 gallon tank. We got all this Dragonstone right here with these like really cool sharp tops that we can use to make this look like a mountain range. These are basically little filter media bags. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take them and we're gonna fill them with lava rock. We're gonna use this to create height in the aquarium without having to waste our good expensive Dragonstone. We're gonna go rinse this off. Do you see the water coming out of there? We don't want that inside of the tank. We're gonna do one on each side because we want two kind of mountain peaks. So now that we got our sandbags positioned in place, we're ready to go ahead and put the substrate in. The main one we're gonna be using is... It's still plant soil. It's got a bunch of nutrients inside of it that plants can use for the first like couple months. It's also pelletized, which makes it so it doesn't cloud the water. The goal is to not have it look like a milkshake. Milkshake! Yeah. We have a solid amount of our substrate in here and where the clear area is kind of why we want to create our white sand path. So before we do that, we kind of are going to start filling in some rocks. We have a ton of different sized dragonstone, which we'll use to do our hardscape. Last summer, I visited the Dolomites in Italy, and it was honestly one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. And the peaks there and the way the mountain ranges look are incredible. So that's kind of what I want to go for with this scape. Our plan is to make it look kind of like a mountain range. Then we're gonna be watering everything down just to make it a little bit more moist. Moist. 
it's gonna help kind of the substrate stick together. Then you're gonna be able to have a lot more flexibility when you're placing the rock in there. What Chris is doing is he's now just sprinkling over all of the little holes and divots in the rock. It's gonna fill in some of those empty crevices and uh, really make those rocks stay nice and sturdy. All right, so now that we've added all the black sand in the rock, we're ready for our white sand road. Follow the yellow brick road. We're gonna make a little white sand path right through the middle, winding out into the back of the mountains. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's kind of tight. No, <laughs> <laughs> did you do that? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty tight. Like all the rocks are like sticking up like that. Woo! We got the SR Quare Stick. These are the aquascaping tools. Now you're not really a true aquascaper unless you're using professional grade tools. I think these are gonna be the ones for. Pushing all those. For planting, yeah. We're gonna start putting some of our plants in the tank. Guide my sword. All right, this is a Monte Carlo plant. It's uh, probably a moderate plant to care for. When it grows across the bottom of the tank, it looks really cool. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna try to separate these. Cause you separate them into a couple different clumps so we can spread it out around the tank. The next plant we're gonna put inside the tank is Dwarf Baby Tears. It's very similar to Monte Carlo, but this plant definitely needs CO2. Which Science! Which is why we're gonna to wanna to run CO2 on this tank. Both plants benefit from it, but this plant really requires it to be successful. So these guys are some Anubias Nana Petites. We're gonna actually take these and glue some of these to the rocks. The reason why we're gluing them instead of just kind of setting them in there and letting them grow is so that they don't just float away. And that's the really cool thing also about this kind of rock is it has these little holes in it so you can do this. The final plant we're gonna use is some java moss. And we're gonna take our glue and we're just basically string gluing it to kind of like the edges of our path. Now we're able to put in all of our like bigger equipment, like our light, our filter, and our CO2. So Chris is gonna explain our lights. This is the uh, Zet Light UFO. Do you believe in UFOs? Oh, oh yeah, yes sir. These are uh, really good lights with the planted tanks. Just a single light, a uh, single puck on here. So that's gonna be a uh, one spot for the light. And then it's got a actual included arm and everything just to make it a really clean and slick look for you guys. They also have the uh, brackets already included for them too. So All right. Just to we're installing the Sun Sun canister filter. It's currently 2.17 a.m. You're gonna need that box. I would just hand hold it. I would take out a little more of the red. It's been quite the process. We're almost done here. The final thing we're gonna do before we fill it with water is set up our CO2. It's a lot of CO2. Whew. There you go, so just gonna... Right, this thing. All right, guys, we have the hardscape set up. We got the lights. We got, check this out. We got the canister filter. We got the CO2. Everything is set up. This thing is ready to be filled with water. So now is the delicate part. We're going to take this super slow. We don't want to mess up our scape. We're going to fill this with water. Hopefully, we can keep this cool mountain range we've created. We put down a plastic bag. This is going to help disperse the water so it comes in really slowly. And the last step of this process is we gotta add our conditioner and then our bacteria so that we can start the cycle of this tank. I wanna add fish as quickly as I can like any aquarist. All right guys, I mean, the tank looks fantastic. It's it's pretty incredible. I'm kind of surprised we pulled this off in one day. Major thanks to the Gingerbread Twins, Nick and Chris, for helping me with this. In just a few days, I'm probably gonna go back to Gingerbread Tropical Fishing Coral and get fish for this aquarium. So I want you guys to tell me what kind of fish I should put in this aquarium. Comment down below. I'm also anticipating this channel hitting a quarter of a million subscribers. It's honestly crazy. I wanna thank you guys. We are gonna be doing an 80 gallon dream saltwater tank giveaway. So if you're interested in signing up for that, I'm gonna put the link in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next one. But until then, remember to keep those nitrates low. George, out. This is
is uh, the Mona Lisa plant. Uh, believe it or not, it comes from the rice fields of Malaysia. And the only way for it to grow in your tank is to activate it using your soul. So uh, <laughs> you have to sing it a song. Um, sing to it. Sing to the Mona Lisa plant. <laughs> <laughs>